Welcome to Northwest Fencing Center's fencing series on YouTube. This is Coach Michael McTeague and today we're going to be talking about making mods to your ball target. Now, we have earlier in our series taught you how to make a simple ball target using a tennis ball. But you've been using that for a few weeks and you may have noticed that you might want to change the way that ball behaves or change your ball target so that you could do drills in a different way or so that you can have a higher degree of difficulty to the drills that you're doing. There are lots of ways we can do this. The primary way we can do it is to simply change the ball. So rather than using a tennis ball we could use a soft rubber ball that's lighter but much less reboundy. Um, we could also change um, the size of the ball. <clears throat> we could use a larger ball if we wanted to. We could use a smaller ball. So this opens up all kinds of possibilities. Now the ball we've been using is soft but has a lot of rebound to it. It's a, it's a rubber bladder filled with air and even though we cut a hole in it to put a string in it still rebounds off of our tip very quickly. We might want to change that by simply changing to a different ball like a soft rubber ball. This has a foam core to it and you probably would want to cut a poke a hole with a screwdriver all the way through this ball and pull the cord through and not at the bottom. I don't think our normal way of attaching a tennis ball is going to work for this one. And that's going to give us a very different sort of behavior to the ball when we hit it. We might also decide that we want to use a baseball or a softball. Or we might want to have a hardcore ball that we're going to use. And by hardcore, I mean a ball that doesn't have air in the middle. Um, we might also want to make our target smaller. So we might want to use a golf ball. Now, in order to make these balls into a ball target, we're going to need to have a drill or an awl and the help of someone who knows how to use that without hurting themselves. And we need to drill a really small little hole, tiny little hole in, and then we would screw into it a screw eye. That's like a little metal loop with a threaded screw on the bottom. And it would screw in there. And it's the same thing if you have a picture hanging kit around the house or that's the same kind of thing you would screw into the frame of a picture that you'd attach the picture wire to. You could put that into the ball with the hard core and tie a string to it. Now obviously if you take those three balls I mentioned, a softball, a baseball, and a golf ball, you've got three different sizes so you're going to have a different kind of target to go for. And each of them has its own characteristics. The softball is quite heavy compared to the other two. It's a solid core ball, but there's a certain softness to the covering and stuff to it, so that when I hit it with my tip, there's going to be a deadening quality to it. It's not going to rebound off my tip quite as fast. It's going to swing at a different rate because of its heavier weight. So it's going to go away and come back at a different rate of speed than the one I'm used to working with. A hard ball is harder, and though the core is hard, it's going to rebound off of my tip faster, say, than a softball would. It's going to be roughly the same size as what we've been used to working with, but it's going to rebound off the tip a very different way than a, than a tennis ball or a softball. It's going to be a little bit quicker than the softball, but a little bit slower than rebounding off of a tennis ball. So, that leaves us with the golf ball idea. We have a small, small target. It's going to be harder to hit. It raises our level of difficulty up, and this can be a really good thing, depending on what it is we're practicing with our target. The one thing that you will notice with a golf ball is, is that it will rebound off the tip of your weapon very fast. So when you hit it, boom, it's going to take off. It's just going to shoot right out there. That's going to bring different quality to your point control. It's going to take off really fast, and because this is a pendulum, that means it's going to be coming back very quickly. So your attack 
counterattack when the ball is coming back, those kinds of drills will change substantially from the ball that you've been using. In that same vein, there is a ball that I quite like, um, and the wonders of the internet means you don't have to dig around to try and find one of these. You can simply log on, find them, and you can buy a little pack of three of them. And what I'm talking about is a squash ball. Not a lot of squash players hanging around here, but we can get a squash ball anytime we want, thanks to the internet. A squash ball is about the same size as a golf ball, but it's hard rubber with a hollow inside. So we can make a slit in it or put a screw eye into it, either one that we want, but we're going to have a ball that's the size of a golf ball, but it's going to rebound off of the tip much more slowly than the golf ball will. It has a little bit more um, of the feel of hitting a tennis ball and the behavior of hitting a tennis ball, but in a much smaller package. So that can be really useful. Now, other than just changing the ball, there's a host of things we can do. Let's say we want to stick with the tennis ball. We want to change its behavior. We can change how it rebounds. We can even change the kind of path that it's going to take after we hit it. We can even do some modifications that will add a, a large random quality to the response of the ball after it's been hit. Now, the first thing we can do is we can take our tennis ball and we have that slit that we had in it for putting our string in. And we can take a small funnel. I've pushed one in here. We can put a funnel into the ball. Why would I want to do that? I'm going to fill it with sand or salt. Something that's heavy that I can pour in there. Maybe you have little tiny heavy fishing weights, the little split weights that you put on the fishing lines. You could fill it with those. Something of that quality is going to change the weight of the ball drastically. And it's going to put something inside the ball that is not static, like the inside of a baseball or a golf ball. What's in there now is going to move a little bit. So it has mass and it's going to move, and all those granular granules or little fishing weights are going to move together. So that now when I hit the ball, it's going to have a deadening effect. It's not going to rebound off the tip as fast at all. It's going to have a very different quality to it. Because it has more mass now, if I want to start the ball swinging, and we have done drills in the past where the ball is swinging, and we're keeping pace with the ball and then deciding to stay in counter. Um, that movement is going to last for a longer period of time because the ball has a lot more mass now. So we can do more footwork in and out of distance with the ball than we could have without the weight in it. Now, if I don't have some salt that I can pour in there, or some sand, handy, or fishing weights, what can I put in there? Well, I can take my funnel out, open up this hole, and I could, if I had a bag of marbles, I could stuff a bunch of marbles in there. You'd be able to get them out later if you want them. I could stick a bunch of marbles in. That would do a very similar thing to it. I could um, gravel, small gravel rocks, pebbles and small pebbles and stuff that you pick up um, on the beach those kinds of things. I can use those to fill it up with. I do not want to put anything in there that's perishable. Um, I wouldn't want to use flour. I wouldn't want to use uh, sugar. Um, salt would be fine because it's fairly inert. It's just, you know, um, a mineral essentially and it's going to sit there. But if you use sugar or flour or something that's perishable or edible, you're going to wind up with a target ball that's covered with ants. Um, or all of a sudden the room that you have that target ball in starts to smell a little funky. I'm also going to want to stay away from liquids because there's not going to be a tight seal at the top of this and as I hit it little bits of that liquid will squirt out um, and it's going to make my target wet and maybe the floor wet as well and depending on what it's wet with again we might have a problem uh, with bugs um, or just slippery, fall down and go boom. We don't want to do that either. 
So I can fill my ball with some stuff and make it behave differently. I can also do some things with the way the ball is attached on the rope. I happen to have a heavier rope. It's actually a bungee cord in this one. More on that in a moment. But I can make a slit on both ends. And I might have to use a screwdriver to wiggle and hold those ends open and stuff, but I can work my string through so that my rope or my goes through and comes out the other side. And I could simply pull this down so that I had a length of rope hanging below the ball. This is going to have a deadening effect again on how the ball acts. And this light weight of the rope swinging around at the bottom is going to add a small amount of random activity to the ball and how it acts. So that when I hit it, the ball goes the rope lags for a little, um, hit the ball and the ball takes off. The rope lags for a little bit and then it catches up and then the ball wants to swing back and the rope lags for a little bit and then it catches up. So it has a damping uh, quality and a slight, because the rope will swing around a little bit, it'll also have, a, um, introduce a little bit of random motion to the ball, but not too much. I could tie a knot or I could put maybe a, uh, um, tie a nut or a washer uh, or something down here and give it a little bit more weight and introduce a little more random action. Or I could take a ball and I could put a second ball on this rope so I have two balls that I'm going to hit one or I hit the other. If I hit the upper of the two tennis balls, you'll see how that's going to make, this is going to start to make that dance. Not only have I got two targets that I can work at now, but when I hit each one, it's going to behave differently than the other one, and it's going to behave way differently than a single target ball on a rope. Um, you can introduce so much of what I call crazy action into what the middle ball is doing by having this ball and a whatever length that string is will change that behavior. So I can slide this up and I can make that string longer and I'm going to get a different quality than I would get if the string was down closer to the other target. So I can introduce varying degrees of random frequency of the movement of the ball by placing a second ball onto the rope. Now. You can get super fancy, and you can see a few people on YouTube have done this, where you take a bungee cord like this, and you attach it at the top of the doorway and at the bottom of the doorway. You attach it to the floor as well as to whatever it's hanging from. Or maybe you tie this end around a 25-pound weight or something, and clunk, you lay it down on the ground, you have this up there, and now the ball is on a bungee cord and it's stretched. So when you hit it, it's going to make a short, sharp motion, and that's it. You could put several balls up. Some people have gotten super fancy and they've built themselves frames out of PVC plumbing pipe where they have several of these strings so that they can have several targets at several different heights. And sometimes this is pulled really taut so that the ball doesn't move much at all. Sometimes it's, it's not tight as taut so that the ball kind of doesn't move as much. Um, and you can have multiple targets at different heights, or you can turn your frame so that instead of being sideways, it's more in a line, and you could have multiple depths of targets to hit. Certainly, if you have the place to do that, and you have the ability to um, buy and design a simple frame, and it's not that hard, um, and you can find many examples out there, um, <clears throat> then that's another way that you can bring a different thing to your target ball practice. Um, you will notice that fencers that use target balls to do practice, not only they have great point control, but they also tend to put as much variety into the training as possible. And this is a way where you can use the equipment you're using to bring that variety, not just how you're working out with it. So, have fun making your, your, your um, Target ball mods. Um, if 
you come up with something really cool that you didn't see here and you want to share it, send it to social at nwfencing.org. Send a picture or maybe a short TikTok video, and we'll try and share it with everybody on social media. Take care. We'll see you for the next one.